we go, part 8 of the 2007-120 Prado. Uh, we just got to get this stud out of the front of the head there, so two nuts together and out she'll come. Nothing left on here that we need, I'm just going to go around and make sure. Old O-rings, they stayed behind. Plug, uh, I think the new blocks, got a, they don't even need a plug anymore with the new manufacturer and we believe there is a new manufacturer or something's changed with the manufacturing of the engines. I'll show you more on the other engine in a minute. Look at this dirty grubby old thing. Look at it. Filthy. Alright around the back here, I think we'll need that bolt on the other block. That's going to be for the earth cable. So I'm going to take that out right now. Bring it over here and put it in the, uh, see if I can do that left handed. I don't think I can. I'm not very good. Left hand at holding a camera. I can't concentrate on two things at once. Oh my god, what's going on? I can't even get it started. Oh no. Oh, there it is. There it is. So that's for the uh, earth. Don't forget Ooh, that. Out here. Uh, what else is left here? This is the last thing we need getting that stud out, huh? Is it coming out or what? Not yet. Not yet. Mm. We'll get it. We'll get it. Oh, looks a bit bare now, doesn't it? Tap all the spare bolts. And throw it over to this one. Might not even be the right hole, but close enough. Work it out. Look at this. Look at this thing. Turbo's on. Just doing the uh, timing arrangement now. Timing belt, etc. All the pumps are on. Okay. You know, supply pumps in. Vacuum pump, vein pump, engine mirror. This stay, we could probably uh, bolt that up. Oh no, we need to get to the pipe, so we'll get all the fuel pipes on first. Then all the e just still to go. It looks like there's still a bit of work to go yet, getting this all swapped over. Right, so, you've got to get this timing belt on. It's happening over this side. The tension is all on, that's looking good. Okay, just checking with a one, two, three, four, five bolts in there. This is all being forked up. Checking the bearing, not too bad. So is the alternator going to go on before it goes in the car as well? No. That's probably coming next then, isn't it? No, I would prefer to put it Leave in the alternator on in the car, yeah. So yeah. the alternator was off when we lifted out, wasn't it? That's yeah. right. I could yeah, remember. Yeah, I've got a pretty memory. bad memory, you know, I'm losing memory. Yeah. Okay. I love these nice clean pulleys though, you know, when you're being here. Mm -hmm. That time belt looks pretty good. What do you reckon? Spot on. Ready to pull the pin. Bombs away. So this is what we do once the belt's on. That's when we go and talk everything up. So the tension of the idler, all the bolts, including the top one, the 98 newton meters. Come on, it'll come out. It'll come out. Well, that'll come off, and we'll put on the other engine. Yeah, well, it came off no dramas, and we cleaned it up, and we've installed on the new engine. It's about to get. That one's a really high torque setting. I think it's 325 newton meters, or does anyone remember what that one is without checking? I don't know, something like that anyway. That should be enough, I reckon. What do you reckon? New fuel pipes come with a new engine. The new fuel pipes are supplied, including the one from the pump to the common rail. So the magic wand's been out, and like magic, this engine is ready to lift back in. Um, Going to do a final QC inspection and make sure everything is on. Over this side now, what do we got? Everything's all good. Going to have a bit of a look over it. Anyway, a bit of footage there that you know anyone can see. This is. There's different ways you can do things. You can have the whole e jar and everything on there. Sometimes it can make it a bit tight, getting it in and out. You can even have put a lot of this gear on afterwards. You know, each to their own. There's different ways to do things. Whatever works for you. I reckon energy up and let's get the uh, thing in so there. The engine bay is all prepared and checked before the engine goes in. What I mean by prepared and checked well, is again different ways to do things. Best way lifting engines in and out I find is three people. One on the jacking or lowering the engine and one on each side watching and guiding that it doesn't get caught up on anything over this side or over here. Um, 
with these engines. You, you can get them in with the engine mounts in place, or you can take them both out, or you can take one out. Um, what seems to be working best is obviously having them in like that is good, but having this one not in the way is good as well. So get the engine generally into position and then slip the engine mount in before it drops on. Now, one other main precaution you should take if you're, and I guess most people watching aren't gonna be deciding to change an engine. It's a big job, that's for sure. Um, make sure you've got the torque converter. That's in the middle of the picture there, right? That's your torque converter, okay? So when we talk about torque converters in other videos, that's what we're talking about, that unit there, right in the middle there. To keep things simple, let's try and call, we'll call it like an automatic clutch, okay? So you don't have a clutch, that's your automatic clutch, if you like. Um, it's not what it is, but you know, just to keep it simple, so hopefully you understand. It needs to be correctly pushed in, in place. So as we mentioned in earlier videos, right on the end there, right in the middle bit right there, sometimes they can get a little bit stuck in the back of the flywheel, removing them. That's that part there, and you can see it's all been cleaned up and lubricated. So hopefully there won't be a next time anytime soon, but well, not cleaned up, it's a new engine, but lubricated, right? So you just give it a bit of a push and a turn just to make sure it's in the correct position before you put the engine in. Because obviously if that torque converter is sitting out a little bit, a few millimetres, not locked in place, it can get jammed up and end up causing permanent damage, probably to the transmission, most likely. I think I've heard of that happening at least once before. Um, I wouldn't be able to say categorically, but it, that a Toyota did that, a Toyota dealer, but my memory tells me I'm pretty sure. Um, anyway, doesn't matter who and where, but yeah, you get that. So you've got to make sure the transmission's jacked up to the correct height. That looks like it's got to go up a little bit more. Most uh, hydraulic jacks do leak down slowly, a little bit over time. Slow leaks once they get a bit older, so that'll need to go up just a little bit because you want it up as high as possible so that when you lower the engine in, lower it in, line it up with the transmission because it's got a couple locating points there, varies from engine to engine, and also getting it on the engine mount. So they're the two things, the main things you've got to get into alignment, slotting the engine onto the transmission housing, you know, around the outside there, and getting the engine onto the engine mounts there, and there'll be another one over here somewhere anyway. So anyway. We're going to get on with lowering it in. Come on mate, you know, I'm meant to be just videoing here. I can't be uh, pulling the crane back and forward as well, mate. You need to get someone else in here. Oh yeah, it's going in. Oh, look at this one, yeah. Go back, please. I told you I can't keep pulling the crane back and forward and run the video, mate. People want to see what's going on. <laughs> this is a bit of deja vu. Um, well, I think another time I stood here, so yeah, you're all clear at this side. Those people that watch the videos, you know, I'm not doing much. I'm just the cameraman here. I'm not. I'm not the star of the show. See that magic moment where it has lined up to the bell housing and now what we can do is go backwards now magic moment um i can't find the magic wand where, where did you put it where, where's the magic wand uh, yeah it's pretty well getting to where it wants to be this engine mount here just about ready to flop on oh, um a bit more wiggling and aligning and but I've been. So I can't find the magic wand. Um, I've heard about the magic moment. All I need is a magic diagram or a magic instruction book where we just flip through the pages instead of having to learn, read and do, then we just, as we turn the page, it just happens like magic. Okay, get the bolts in, it's in. The dowels are in on the transmission. Get those bolts in, baby. Just let me know when you're in at least five turns, I can let it go, because I'm my left arm is stressed out holding it in that position. Let go, sir. Okay, I'll give it a wiggle, make it easier or harder for you or what? Oh, it's beautiful. Beautiful, that's what we want. We like beautiful. Okay, so bell housing's on. Engine mount at the driver's side. Just 
sitting nicely. Pop the nut on. Beautiful. Alright, look, there it goes. The uh, passenger side engine mount's on. And the nut's going on right there now. Alright, so she's sitting in. The uh, bell housing's sort of bolted up and the engine mounts are bolted up. So we can get, uh, get the chain off the top here. What do you reckon? Put it up in the air and uh, get everything underneath, all the torque converter bolts and that next. That's it. That's the go. Alright guys, um, that's the latest update on this one. Um, obviously, everything on the engine's been swapped over, the engine's in. It's just a matter of getting everything bolted back up to the engine and getting it all started. Hopefully you got a little bit of information, at least an update. Please give us a thumbs up. And there'll be probably another one video, I think, in this series on this engine. What a wasted engine. Big sort of waste of money could have been avoided. So please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, turn the bell on, and I reckon we've got maybe one more to go.